think that, you know, in 1990, the population of this country was 55 million. It is now between 62 and 63 million. That is a massive, massive increase. And I think ordinary folk going about their lives are feeling it. And I, and I, I think, you know, po you know Im having a proper immigration policy, controlling the numbers, doing what nearly 200 countries in the world do, namely controlling the numbers that come and the type of people that come, is the answer. Right. Russell Brown. I sometimes feel worried about you, Nigel Farage. Uh, the, the reason I feel worried is because I, I know a lot of people are frightened in our country. I know a lot of people are feeling afraid and frustrated. And there is a sense that there is a corrupt, corrupt group in our country using our resources, taking away our jobs, taking away our housing, not paying taxes, exploiting us. And there is. There is an economic elite that this man's party is funded by, that this man is the back, comes from background working in the city. Let me tell you something. There was an economic crash and a lot of money was lost. His mates in the city farted. Nigel Farage is pointing at immigrants and the disabled and holding his nose. Immigrants are not causing the economic problems and suffering we experience. as any of us, I enjoy seeing Nigel Farage in a boozer with a pint and a fag laughing off his latest scandals about breastfeeding or whatever. I enjoy it. But this man is not a cartoon character. He ain't Del Boy. He ain't Arthur Daly. He is a pound shop Enoch pal. And we got to watch him. Well, Russell, that's all, um, that's all well and good. And you've got your point of view. The question was... Is Britain overcrowded? And, and, and uh, do you think I'm wrong? I mean, do you, I mean, do you, do you yes. not think? Do you, Nigel, can okay. I not be do you more not clear, think? mate? I do you think you're wrong. Do you not think? Kind of well, you... This is called question time, this programme, right? And well, happens, tonight you could have an hour. And what happens is, <laughs> members of the audience ask questions, and we're expected to answer them. You haven't answered this lady's question. Do you think Britain's overcrowded and there is a strain on public resources and people's quality of life? We need more money for public resources. Well, where's it going to come from? not overcrowded. It's going to come... Oh, I'm so glad you asked, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Since the financial crash, banker bonuses have exceeded uh. £80 billion. Pounds. George Osborne, your <laughs> Chancellor, campaigned to stop caps being placed on banker bonuses at the same time there were austerity cuts against the poorest among us, the disabled, people that we need to be looking after. We need to close tax loopholes which are exploited by big corporations. There's money. I've got money now. I've seen rich people. There's plenty of money out there. It's just not being distributed. <laughs> I'm scared just to do normal things, go shopping, do the school run, anything like that. Threats to kill. Um, I was being followed at one point. And just intimidation, I felt really scared. Eighteen months ago, changes were made to eligibility for legal aid, and it's now been removed from almost all family law cases. The only exception is for domestic abuse victims. But women's organisations say there's a big problem, which is putting victims and their children in greater danger. And that's because the Legal Aid Agency requires that a victim produces certain kinds of evidence that they have in fact been abused, and not all victims are able to produce it. I spoke to Mandeep Guy, a solicitor at the Charity Rights of Women, who advises callers to their helpline. There's lots of women who are astonished when, that, when they find out that even though they've experienced years of abuse and they're financially eligible for legal aid, they still won't get legal aid because they haven't got the very specific forms of evidence that the legal aid agency will accept. So if a woman finds out that she's not eligible for legal aid, um, what are her options? Those are very difficult calls for me. They don't have many options. Um, they can try and get some uh, pro bono uh, advice and representation, but that's very difficult and demand is very high, and a lot of that kind of service is concentrated in London, so if you live up north it can be quite difficult. Women are faced with two choices. They can either stay as they are or, or agree to whatever the, the father or their ex-partner is asking for, 
or, or take no legal action at all, or they can go to court and, and, and face the terrifying prospect of facing their abuser in court. For a domestic abuse victim, facing the prospect of going into court on her own to fight for her future financial security, and who is often in the situation where she has to try and make safe arrangements for contact for her children with a violent ex-partner, the prospect of not having a lawyer on her side can be devastating. So there's some very significant problems with the evidence criteria. It looks on the face of it like a fairly long list, but what we know from the women that we work with is that, that it doesn't reflect the reality of the evidence that women are likely to have. Also a lot of the, the criteria the evidence criteria are restricted in, in, in time. So if, if you've got a piece of evidence, but it's more than two years old, you can't rely on it in order to apply for family law legal aid. Because there's no one to go with you, so you have to go on your own. I've never been in court before, so I didn't know what to expect. So, yeah, I had all my paperwork ready, but you just hope that it's enough and you've done a good job of it. I didn't know he would be there because a lot of people don't turn up. The second courtroom was a very small room and it just had a table and some chairs at the back. I went to sit at the back, but then the judge asked me to come and sit at the front to sit opposite. Opposite him? Opposite him, yeah. And what was that like? It was quite frightening. Even though there was other people in the room, it's still, um, I still find him very intimidating.